ladies and gentlemen, on the left-hand side, the fabulous and famous Adelphi Hotel. Six months since we were last at the Adelphi, the hotel is welcoming a new kind of guest. Tourists are coming to Liverpool not to explore the city, but the hotel itself. This group of 38 have travelled all the way from Scarborough. Chef. The chef. Chef. Chef will probably put, come and say hello this evening. Right. All right, I'll bring Brian with you as well. Okay. All right. See you at dinner. They've each paid £79 to meet and eat with the staff. We get invited to different things now. I've been asked to do after dinner speeching. <laughs> Can you imagine me? Your autograph. Oh, indeed. Your card. What name is it, please? There you Lovely. go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that's a daisy one. Oh, no. Just tell Christy. She had to come with us on a, on a tour. We're split yes. into groups. Yes. Yeah. The famousness thing. You know, I'm still not used to. That's how it should be. There you go. Anybody else? I don't understand why people want to see what type of shopping I buy when I'm in Asda. And they're like, oh, hello. <laughs> Got the head in me trolley and then. Thank, Thank you very much. Everything is running to schedule until a phone call brings the potential of 300 unexpected guests. We have a delayed flight coming in. We had one last night. Oh, we've got another one tonight. Can't go. I've got a flight coming in 320 pounds. Dinner, bed, and breakfast. Okay. All right. I don't need lots of children on this flight. What I need it to be is Cancun, Mauritius. Mexico. Mexico? We don't need a Florida. Florida flights mean lots of children, and most of the hotel's family rooms are booked. We've got a lot of rooms that are out of order, only because the carpets have been shampooed today, so they're not quite dry, so at a last resort we'll use them. While Christine wrestles with the rooms and Brian plans an impromptu dinner for 325, the tour group is waiting to be shown round. But organising 38 star spotters and a delayed flight from Manchester should be child's play compared to last year when guests from around the world arrived for the 101st Rubber Studies Conference. <laughs> Delegates from over 35 countries check in for the Adelphi's biggest ever multinational event. With the hotel full, General Manager Eileen Downey needs all her troops on fighting for them. Sick! <laughs> Sick? Sick with what? Had the runs and I've just been sick all night. Right, well you weren't sick when you left here the night before, Robert, and you aware the inconvenience to this building? Yeah. Right, are you aware how important this week is to me? Yes, I do. Right, well you can go back to signing in on my desk. You find yourself five minutes late in this building this week, Robert, and I am not going to be pleased. Right, now we've been along this road before, haven't we? Yeah. Right. And it's an inconvenience when you come in the staff entrance and you have to walk all the way here and sign in and wait for the duty manager to countersign it, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Well, we'll go back to inconveniencing Robert since you inconvenience me. Okay. So I suggest you go about your business and let's hear no more from Robert Hallmark this week. OK. Thank you. What? You know, Robert's got to sign in every morning now. To cope with the demands of so many international delegates, operations manager Brian Birchall will need to communicate effectively with all his staff. Including Robert. Duty manager's thing. Duty manager's thing, he's got to sign in. And I'm going to get him to sign out as well. Because that's the problems that we have, because he doesn't do the things at the end of the night. All right. No one's speaking to me. Brian's being funny, as you can see him before, so. Just ignore everyone today. Keep out of everyone's way. Banqueting administrator Carol Byrne has a problem. She's been organising the lavish maritime-themed dinner that will end the conference tomorrow night. But she's just heard that her professional party planners have pulled out. These people have come from all over the world and they really need to see this city, which is steeped in maritime history. We just want to send them away with a little bit of it, if we can. She and Brian have only 24 hours to transform the main lounge into a luxury liner. Hello. Um, can you help me, please? This is the Adelphi Hotel here. The conference means extra work for Mark the Porter, but also extra money. He'll get five pounds for each delegate he retrieves from the station. If he can find them. Mr Lee Boon Chin, Mr NG Kochti. Shouldn't be too hard to find, anyway. Hopefully two Chinese gentlemen, so I'm going to have to start practicing with Chinese. <laughs> Found under Y for yachting, this local chandler throws Carol and Brian a lifeline. 
Yeah. What's the protector? Yeah. Is it sunk now? More than likely. Oh dear. <laughs> that would be super fun. Yeah, that's we good. We could just that. hang that somewhere. Yeah. We'd clean it up, like. You could wear that hat, Brian. I can see you in that hat. You look all more like Mae West than I do. <laughs> Morning. Morning, get your hats on. Over the next 48 hours, executive chef David Smith will produce nearly 3,000 hotel meals. But before he can start preparing for tonight's conference reception, last night's washing up still needs to be done. Who's on with you, Ian? Yeah. All right. Excuse me, sir. Is that Mr. Li Bing Chin? Li Bing Chin? No. No. Okay, they're from Malaysia. Yeah. Yeah, and no, they're not here yet. They're not here yet. But, no? but they're coming. Yeah, I know them. Yeah. Yeah, well, I've been arranged to put, take your luggage to the hotel. No, you so, uh, but you going I'm, to, I'm not leaving here. Are you going to the Adelphi Hotel? Yeah, that's right. Put okay. your luggage there. I'll put it on the trolley for you. Not quite the right delegate, but as long as no one notices the difference, Mark should get his five pounds. The decorations for the lounge have arrived from the Chandlers. But to improve the maritime theme, Carol's decided the staff should be dressed as sailors. She has sent their captain, Brian, to find the costumes. So how many of them have you got? I can do 11. If you want more, then I'll make a couple more to match up if you wanted me to go to that. Right. I don't really like that. Tacky. And the hat. It doesn't. Too small. Chef needs to start preparing for tonight's reception. But go and have a look before you phone me. Once the hotel restaurants leave him in peace. That, is that soup downstairs in Jenny's? What? Is the soup, has the soup gone down for Jenny's? Yeah. That's why they're moaning about it. Not happy with the captain's outfit, Brian decides to promote himself to Admiral for tomorrow's maritime dinner. Collar, a white scarf that would go around the top of that. And the white trousers. I quite like that, actually. <laughs> it looks very commanding. Nice. I'm very commandable. Yeah. <laughs> Back at the station, Mark has one last delegate to collect. All he has to do is pick him out. I'm looking for an African chief, but unfortunately, I don't know his name. So I'll just have to then wait for someone that looks odd. Hello. Hello. You're going to the Adelphi Hotel, yeah? Yes, how are you? Not too bad. To nice to meet you. Yeah. I'll put it on this trolley, so it saves bringing this one back, okay, you see. The chief has arrived just in time for the ministerial reception that will open the conference. Chef and his team are getting ready to serve the hot canopies. Timing is crucial. There's only a ten-minute window between the minister's speech and his departure. nationality and signature, sir. Should you leave any of your fabulous clothing behind, we need to contact you to forward it on. <laughs> okay. It's just for lost property purposes, sir. And is it by cash or by credit card, sir? Cash. It's cash. cash. That's 400 to pay, please, oh, sir. Yeah. He, he didn't have much change. He said he's going to come back down when he gets some English currency. Mark doesn't get a tip from the chief. But it does get some unwelcome advice from the boss. Mark, when I tell you to wear your coat, I don't care whether the train's in or not, you wear your coat. Right, have I made myself clear, Mark? Right, at the moment, you're an embarrassment. I'm too busy to cope with embarrassment this week. Go on your desk and sort your keys out. Do enjoy your stay with us. Thank you. So, sorry, I miss all the meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you right. should attend the meetings. Yeah, okay, you know. He was the first African chief I've ever checked in. He was lovely. I felt terrible asking him for cash. I don't know how, how high up he is. The International Rubber Studies Conference has begun. John Battle, Britain's Minister for Science, Energy and Industry, has arrived on time. Where did he tell me? That's what I'm I, asking you. I don't yet. know yet. In ovens. Now it's down to Chef and Brian to keep their cool. Just tell me where they are. Chef! Chef! The minister's supposed to be making a speech at ten past, and it's going to be for five minutes at tops. That's a ten-minute warning. Mr Chairman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen,
Pray silence for the Minister for Science, Energy and Industry. No, they want them in the room. They were asking us for the drinks and the canopies in the room. I only say what the customer says. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I know I'm not. I know you are, Brian. Do you? You are a dickhead. And get your hat on. And I wish the International Nullis Study Group all the very best this week and when you meet again. Thank you very, very much for coming to the You see, you've got a ten minute warning there. Whatever that means, if there's a nuclear f***ing war, we f*** with him, aren't we? When I breathe, it annoys the chef, cos he's just on one today. Thank you very much, sir. Chef got his food out on time, and the minister caught the last train to London. But tomorrow's even more important. It's only 8 a.m., but despite the staff's best efforts, some of the overseas delegates have already been offended. The complaint on this restaurant this morning. Right. Right! We had some Buddhists in, and um, it's not a suitable place to have the, the Buddhists, so we're going to move them oh, for right. them to be so for such a lounge. high god. So we're going to have to get them. Oh, right. I'm with, with me. Roll I'm over. With I'm, I'm on it now. So if you want to go and get them, you and Paul, I'll show you where to put them. Yeah. Eileen needs the day to go smoothly and won't accept any excuses, especially not from Robert. The alarm clock never went off. Mm. So I've just run in, got a taxi. Apparently it's a high goddess or something. Yes, it's And it is. they're not suitable in the restaurant, they want them somewhere. Somewhere else. Well, if it makes them happy, that's the main thing. Fortunately for Robert, Eileen's too busy to notice his late arrival. Lady Luck, or someone, was watching over him. All the companies are paying lip service to globalisation. The first plenary session of the International Rubber Studies Group has got off to a flying start. With 35 nationalities, clear translation is essential. Chef! Chef! But in the kitchen, communication seems to be breaking down. They couldn't come out at half past 12, can have the food now, start getting it out. They've just come to me now. They're running early, Val, the organiser, the... For what? Rubber Studies? Rubber Studies. Why are you saying that? Yeah, well, I didn't I'm not a man reader, you know. Well, I'm on that, you see one. So can we have it now? You get the rubber studies out, you get this pierce out of the way. So these guys are doing these things, you know. They come in here, they don't know what they're doing. They know where they're working, but you don't know where they're working. Cheers. So will the hoppy ready for our past as well? Yeah. I know where I'm working. You know what day it is? Yeah. One dinner, I think, just to put it on top. I'd, I'd leave the potatoes until the last minute. They still hurt oh, them, you know. Companies with a well known and accepted. The conference is breaking for lunch ahead of schedule. But there's nothing Chef can do. The potatoes will still take 25 minutes to cook. Now, potatoes, please, Chef. They're not cooked. Is that no? It is a no. You can have them if you want them, but they're not cooked. A number of smaller companies have grown rapidly. In fact, some have grown very rapidly indeed. They're not there yet. No, no, Just no, like I can take this. Ready now. Panicking for this. Leave these. Get them in the steamer, Klaus. Huh? I've got a hot plate that I can. Don't give up. You're not. Oh, uh, you're not. Well, ready. It just looks terrible me walking in when the customers you're are there. You're not ready there. I can have it already. Hey. I can have it already. If it's all there. You've got to be there, haven't you? Hey, potato. <laughs> yeah, I know because they're not cooked. They're it just cooked. saves me going in with that all covered up. They're not cooked. He said you were cooked. Said he, not. he said he was just waiting for the past. Ah, no, he just said he not ready. He just not. didn't know that he said it was. He was just no, past it. Yeah. Just get these in the still in the The chef's tense, I'm not. They are, see what I mean? It's kicking off again. Just cook, will ya? Just cook. Oh, you big queer. Marvellous man. 
Fortunately, science saves the day. The conference session on elastomers proved so interesting, it stretched out until one o'clock, delaying the delegates long enough for Chef to cook the potatoes. We have a, a job that's coming three quarters of an hour, or an hour before it should have done, so consequently the potatoes weren't cooked. But the head waiter omitted to say that the people weren't actually in the room and it wasn't necessary to have the potatoes ready because he's an idiot. With lunch underway, the next challenge is tonight's gala dinner, an international buffet with 35 courses to be served on specially ordered dishes. But Chef has discovered a problem. His main freezer has broken down. Dave uh, Williams, fast. Time to get a, a fridge engineer in here. Not now, no. If that's gone down, we've got a lot of gear in there, haven't we? Hello. And it's going to be a huge buffet-type dinner. Um, lots of different dishes from all over the east and west. Um, barbecue style. And um, we're going to be doing some flambéing sweets. And we're going to dress up silly and sway a little. While Chef rushes to get the 34 courses ready, all the Admiral and his crew have to do is get dressed. Good, aren't they? Oh, these are the staff? Yeah. Brian, that's another large one. Oh, oh brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Should all look very smart tonight. Well, Brian, you'll be going home, and that I know you. You won't be getting a bath. <laughs> you all right for a Saturday night, then? All these guys do, these waiters, is put a suit on. That's all they do. What do you mean? Any fool can put a knife and fork on the table, can't they, for Christ's sake? But uh, getting dressed is, uh, is a bit more difficult. And that's the only difficult thing they have to do. Get dressed. Is this left or right? <laughs> Don't think it matters. How do you get them on? Hopefully it'll come to... Oh, perhaps you should have put them on. Be... Oh, fuck. More haste, less speed. Have they got all the flats, files for the comedian? With half an hour to go, things have calmed down in the kitchen. And the Admiral is prepared for any storms ahead. And you should carry, Fry, you should carry, you know, your hat under your arm like they do. You know, that's And a drink in the other hand. <laughs> you are Horatio Nelson. Chef's fine tonight. He's all right. He's got his dishes, he's got his muscles. When it comes to service, that's a different matter, but he's all right at present. I'm a pussy cat. Well, I say, once a pillock, always a pillock. <laughs> once a chef, always a chef. Oh, you look very sweet. I don't oh, know how many you've got on with you, but it does. You don't put it on that way, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not coming in again. You're not coming in again, you are. You, you bloody... If you're an admiral, you're, you're supposed to be in charge of your fleet. Admirals don't go into galleys. Good evening, Brian. Oh, sir, I like the you wellies. can call me sir. I've had to staple mine up. Oh, well done. Oh, so he's got one to attack. Royal salute. We want to start getting the starters sorted now. Up those red carpet and stairs there. The delegates start to arrive for their pre dinner drinks. But there are no waiters to take the first course out. We're okay, it's just that we're not being uh, informed of what's going on by illustrious leaders. The Rear Admiral, for instance. He looks the part, but uh, I think the ship's been sunk. God help us. Where's this, pot? Where's this chopped parsley? You oh, ask the guys a ladder. They don't ride inside the top. It's now 7.45. With dinner at 8, Chef and his team have decided to arrange the buffet themselves. It's not our job to set out food. But when you've got no assistance from uh, supposedly a senior member of staff, it's a bit poor. <clears throat> but this is usually the case. I mean, we'll end up, we could do, if they asked us nicely, we could serve it as well. We could. Chef's feeling the martyr. Well, well, I'll let him go and set himself on fire. It's about time he'd done some work, or done something. It's the first time he's been outside into a room anyway. He just usually cooks the food and throws it at us. Might as well, bloody serve it. 
go and get the two chicory salads off uh, Andrew in there, would you? Can we get some of your staff organised here? That's what I'm trying to do. Well, well, do it. And can you go and get me all the staff here, please? Everyone here, or all the crew, I mean. I mean, we'll serve it for you if you want. Yeah, that'd be nice. I mean, you might as well. Yeah, it'd be nice, that. What's this doing here? That's right. Does everyone know what they're doing? I'm used to sin. I'm avoiding the chef because it's going to be one of them nights and there's plenty of other people here to take the flak, not me. I'm a front man tonight. I'm keeping out the cage. This thing is pretty cool. There's not me as doing too. Will Mr. Morris Kane and his top table guests please take their seats? The second course will be hot. They have 27 of the 35 dishes left to complete. But as the cold buffet is served in the lounge, Chef discovers some of it's been put into the wrong room. What are you doing with that? It's a, read the menu. Put it in the other room. Read the menus. What's the matter with you? Dickhead he is. But he's just going to burst the blood vessel. I mean, the people don't want to see screaming and shouting. They just want to see food. Start, start moving this in. The main courses are ready, but none of Brian's crew has appeared. Chef decides to take things into his own hands. There's no serving spoons in here. It's not set up. It's a mess, isn't it? It's right. It's a most again, now. <laughs> a waiter brings the food from the kitchen that has produced the food. Yes, sometimes a chef comes in and sets things up, but he's not taking the food out of the kitchen that he's produced himself and bringing it in, or his staff for that matter. And I don't know where the rest of the staff are. Everything all right, chef? Thanks for me. We've got uh, Admiral Nelson over there. I think he's Captain Pugwash. Klaus, is all the food ready? Can I start bringing through now? We're ready! We haven't You're got ready. any waiters here. We're bloody bringing this food out. Organise your staff. Thank you. Organise your staff. Everything's fine, fine, calm and dandy. Except Chef. But unknown to Brian, there's a new burning issue to be dealt with. So would you just like to go through and help yourselves to that? The double glazing has been designed to keep the noise of the city out, but it's also keeping the smoke from the barbecue in. Taking a breather, chefs return to his office to try to solve his freezer problem. <coughs> he still can't get hold of a fridge engineer, and the temperature in the hotel is rising. Don't we crawl on the ground now? <laughs> Keep to the wall. No, not a problem. It's all right. Okay. We're barbecuing. We can't trust the English weather. <laughs> we could have gone on the patio. I saw the but yesterday. they'd have stolen right. the barbecue if we put it out. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, they would not. Just a bit of fog. Just You've a bit got, of fog. <laughs> Smog. You got one detector? No, it's on. No. The barbecue has reduced visibility to five yards. <laughs> I've broken them to get the wind through. I've got the windows open. Eileen hopes Chef may have a solution. But first, she has to find him. Let's go through and see Klaus and say switch the grills off. Well, they have, but it hasn't moved and they haven't well, moved. Well, what do you should have blow? Get yeah. Brian Birchall with his hat to blow on it. Because he's done f else. I'll go and sort it, David. Thank you. Can we put this in the kitchen? Because it's not fit. It won't go anymore. This won't go away now. Oh, we'll carry on cooking. Fine. It won't go away now anymore. What you do, this is the secret. You get some water, put it on your things and walk in. <laughs> 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 you have to go in there. You have to go in there. So in there. <laughs> and we haven't got any gas masks. Oh, Maggie, 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 they have taken her away. 12 hours and 35 courses later, the battle between the Admiral and the Chef is now over.
As the smoke clears, it's time to assess the casualties. Well, it's, it's been that good that Klaus has started smoking okay. again. <laughs> <laughs> they look a motley crew, don't they? But uh, they pulled out the stocks and the job's been very good. Except for the, the, except the, the, for the, the only smoke. Thing, the only thing we didn't do was actually clear the plates off the tables, otherwise we'd have done it in its entirety. <laughs> to Mrs Downey's relief, the evening and the conference are judged a success. And I would like to thank the chef and his team for all their hard work. And even Chef and his crew get a mention in dispatches. The 101st International Rubber Studies Liverpool Conference is almost over. The 102nd Conference is planned for Bali. For Chef and Brian, this battle's won. But the campaigns continue. But like I say all the time, look up at the ceilings, because the ceilings are fantastic here. Today, ten months on, Brian's more interested in tackling tonight's tour of the Adelphi than taking on Chef. In the last half hour, Eileen's discovered that the delayed flight was bound for Florida and is full of children. These people think they're going on the holidays, we will look after them. We tell them that you can drink the water here and um, we all speak English and you know, that goes down well. Nice. Full house. Christine, can you give give me what twin numbers I've got left and start making up sofa beds for families? Just okay. bear with me, Joyce, a second. The shortage of family rooms has been overcome by a clever use of sofa beds for the children. I know, you'll be here till ten and you're going to be very busy, Joyce. Joyce, so you'll be here later than beds? ten. Thank you ever so much. If I won the lottery and I had a nice big house, I'd style my living room on this this room. I love the colours, love the ceiling again. At 9.30, 325 tired holidaymakers, including 66 children, arrive. They thought they were going to be with Mickey Mouse tonight. And there was Mrs Downey in Liverpool. The hotel is full, with 402 rooms taken, and all the Florida-bound tourists have been given a bed for the night. Ten months after the Rubber Studies Conference, nothing's changed. Well, almost nothing. People come in for dinner and they go, oh, you're really famous now? I said, yeah, that's why I'm still saving spuds. There was some woman in Asda and she went, the series been out like twice. And I'm, I'm just in Asda and she went, <laughs> so I was like, wow, scary woman. She's going to stalk me and everything. She went, it's you, it's you, it's you. And I was going, who is it? And she, it's you, it's you off the telly. And I said, oh, God, God, woman, I said, hey, you never meet Madonna. Do you know what I mean? She would just die on the spot if she'd seen someone that famous. For the guests, there's an impromptu firework display from a nearby restaurant. It's not Disneyland, and there's no Mickey Mouse, but there is at least a brief brush with stardom. OK. Thank you. <laughs> Next week, a pregnant bride at the Adelphi. We catch up with her new baby. Pat the chambermaid leads a staff rebellion. And Eileen has more problems in the kitchen.